Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So in front of us is the all new 2023 Dodge Hornet GT. It's finished off in black and this one has an MSRP at just over $33,000. So let's start off today's review for this all new Dodge model by taking a look at what powers this. Underneath the hood, you will find the, if I can get the, the release there, you'll find the two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine this is paired to a nine speed automatic transmission and this pumps out 268 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque sent through an all wheel drive system. It will, will propel this 3,700 pound crossover from zero to 60 in six seconds. Its top speed is 128. And as far as fuel economy goes, you're looking right around 21 miles per gallon in the city and 28 out on the highway. So very fuel efficient for the type of crossover that this is. Now you will notice throughout this entire exterior walk around that the Dodge logo is not spelled out. Simply just has the two Dodge lines throughout the entire vehicle. Right up front, plenty of cutouts located within that grill with the forward facing sensor down below. So this does have adaptive cruise with the distance pacing. Trim accents on both sides are not functional, so it's just within the center. This does have LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals with a nice sleek housing. Matches nicely with that upper grille. And this even has a, a functional heat extraction vents. There's a cutout right there. So airflow can go up through the middle and out the hood, and then of course towards the back of the vehicle. But there's great lines that run around those trim accents. So it's interesting to note that the ones down below are not functional, but you get them up in the hood. Now for the side, very basic set of 18 inch wheels, nice multi-spoke design to them with a dark finish. There is some plastic trim underneath the front uh, spoiler, goes around the fender arches, down the side skirt and to the rear. This does have power folding side mirrors with the turn signal, no sunroof, all the window trim is blacked out though. And I think it has a good side profile design to it. It has a little bit almost of a lift. There's some wheel gap there, but it has a good amount of ground clearance. To make this a great daily driver, you don't have to worry about exits and entrances uh, to uh, scrape or anything like that. But as we work our way to the back now, spoiler up top with the third brake light and the wiper blade, and then a really cool LED bar that runs right through that trunk or the lift gate. Hornets on one side, GT badges on the other. There's the backup camera with all these sensors and then even more plastic for that lower bumper. Now up underneath, there's actually two buttons. One will lock the vehicle. The one on the left side will release it so you can open it up from there, which is a convenient feature. Now this is a mid-size vehicle or a crossover, I should say. So not a whole lot of space in the back. If you're not looking for a large vehicle though, it's still pretty ample underneath can be a little bit hard to lift up with my stuff there, but you do have a decent amount of hidden storage space where you can throw some items underneath, you can put some here, you can even fold down these back seats and there's a cutout in the middle just to make it that much more practical. You can remove this cover too if you need to. There's a 12 volt and some hooks on both sides. So it is pretty usable. There's grab handles on the inside or you can just grab it from the outside there. And as we work our way to the back seats, we have a nice door panel. We have the leather with the red stitching, a little bit of storage, you know, speaker, release handle, and a window control, pretty much all that you need. And we have a great design for the two-tone seats with leather and the vinyl material that runs down the inserts. Now at five foot 10, I have a good amount of space. There's storage pockets. We have air vents and some USBs down below. I have around two inches above my head. Now these seats do not recline, being the crossover that it is, maybe with the amount of space back here in this pillar, there's just not enough room, but they are pretty comfortable, not really vertical, so we have a little bit of a tilt rearward for them. There's the armrest with cup holders in the middle and that cutout that I mentioned if you need to put some items through, and then you can lock that back into place. As far as visibility goes, we have a pretty big pillar there, but it is easy to see in both directions. So I haven't had any issues with visibility over the few days of driving this so far. Now you can lock the vehicle, you grab the door handle, it will unlock, of course. We have all the window adjustments, along with the seat or the side mirrors, lock and unlock, a little bit of storage space down below. And this does have manual adjusting front seats. So there's the bar up front, height adjustment, your recline and incline. Great design to them though. 
So they look and feel very nice. But let's fire this up so we can go through some of the information that this has to offer. So we have the steering wheel, which has a nice design to it. On this left side, all of the cruise and adaptive cruise control settings along with sport mode. Right side has volume along with Bluetooth controls. We can go to the speedometer. You can also look at your performance. You can pull up your driver assistance and then you have any messages that may appear. Now on the left side, there's the miles per hour and the fuel level. Right side will show the tack and some various information. Now on the left side, there's all of the headlight adjustments. And right in the middle for this infotainment system on the home screen, you can scroll through some information here, look at some vitals in the split screen with your phone, as well as trip information, even go into my car and look at that. So if I expand it, now you can view all this information. You can go into your trip, go into the performance. You can even look at your accessory gauges if you want to monitor some more vitals. You have some controls and then various settings to go into. We can go back to home. You can pull up your media, look at your comfort as well. So you can monitor all of this info, pair your phone to the system of course, and then vehicle is what I just showed. So pretty straightforward, easy to use underneath that. Some more trim with the red stitching. There's two air vents and then a row of toggles. You have temperature dials on both sides, fan speed, where you'd like the air to go. Very nice layout for those. The engine start stop feature is just underneath that button there. So when you come to a stoplight and it shuts off, of course, you can control if you want that on or off. You have a great place for your phone and some auxiliaries to be able to charge that. We have power and volume for the radio with this dial. The e-brake is just behind that. And then putting this into reverse, the backup camera has some pretty good graphics. You have sensors on the left side there, and then all the guidelines, of course. And then you can also shift using the shifter itself, which is nice. You have your traction control and parking sensors, which you can also turn on and off. Two cup holders are located in the middle, and then a little bit of storage is in the center armrest along with the glove box where you can place in some more items. Now, like I mentioned earlier, as far as visibility goes, it is pretty easy to see in both directions. So I really don't have any complaints with visibility for the smaller size. But let's go ahead now and get the all new Hornet out on the road. And with it just in the normal setting, here we go. Even coming around a turn, and you can see I'm fighting the steering wheel just slightly with that torque steer from this. But the all new Dodge Hornet GT, just over 30 grand. It's not a performance oriented style vehicle, but on these twisties that I have for it today, it's not doing that bad. I could definitely, you can hear the wheels kind of chirp slightly there just from the power delay. But honestly, not bad. You're not buying this to do the driving that I'm doing right now, but it has the capabilities. It's not something that's going to be a hardcore mountain type of vehicle like this by any means. Maybe some performance modifications could help that as far as suspension goes. Uh, but if you're maybe doing this every now and then, it's got potential. I'm impressed. It's just getting used to some of the torque steer around turns and things like that. It's not as aggressive, of course, as rear wheel drive or like an X drive system or a quattro all wheel drive systems like that. So coming around turns, just have to be a little bit more aware of the type of car that you're behind the wheel. This is not something to go out and just pedal to the floor, but I have been impressed for 30 grand and what this vehicle is. Low center of gravity handles very well for the type of economy style vehicle that this is. And it's pretty quiet, composed feeling. I think it's a nice option. It's, a, it's cool to see a Dodge introducing this new model for that entry level basically price point. You know, the average price of a new vehicle today and what people are paying is close to $50,000. So for 20K under that, for a new vehicle that has some nice tech features to it, not a bad option to 
go with. I think it looks pretty cool from the outside. Interior, you know, there's plastics here. It's 30 grand, it's, it's what you would expect. But if this is in your budget and you're looking for a vehicle of this size, it's been very nice for the week that I've had it. And I do like the layout of everything. It's super simple, but also just the basics that you need without going too overboard. And of course, that's what the extra prices for other vehicles add on, all the extra bells and whistles that you may not really care for or want. So the all new Dodge Hornet, a little bit of a performance oriented vehicle, slightly. But I think that's going to wrap it up for this 2023 GT. If you guys enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up and consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.